All right, so I'm going to give a brief introduction myself. We'll go over the goals for today, um, and we'll talk about the kind of traditional point of sale, uh, mobile devices, which is kind of all the rage these days, uh, and mobile providers, kind of who the people are behind those devices, and then we'll have a Q&A. My name is Justin Dominitz. I am a computer engineer from Georgia Tech. I have an MBA from Georgia State. And I have 15 years in retail technology. And full disclosure, I actually worked at a company that sold some of the hardware that we're going to be talking about today. I don't sell that hardware. Um, I, uh, uh, not in my current business, but I, I did work for a company that did sell that hardware and was a kind of a factor in people's buying decisions. So today, I mentioned this already, we're going to go over um, traditional and modern point of sale hardware options. We're also going to evaluate some cost benefits and peripherals. So um, it's not a, uh, this is not the same kind of decision as buying your laptop or your PC for your home. Not many people have those these days, but um, this is a whole different value proposition for your business. You want to think about that. And we'll also talk about as you expand into maybe a brick and mortar cash and carry business, this is probably even more important. So the traditional point of sale, abbreviated POS. Now, other things are abbreviated POS, which isn't so nice. So here it stands for point of sale. Um, there's a lot of competition for, the, for the, this model, uh, which is this. If you see on the left here in this picture, you've got the, the original, one of the original cash registers that was invented. And it was invented not originally, but perfected by a company called National Cash Register shorted into NCR. NCR has been around for over 150 years. That's the company that I worked for for a while. Uh, the one on the left, of course, is the old one, more than 100 years old, definitely, maybe older than that. The one on the right is an example of an NCR terminal that maybe you might have seen at Macy's, um, maybe even a grocery store. And uh, that's kind of where the two systems has come. It's kind of funny that it kind of almost looked a little similar after all these years. But um, obviously, one is much more modern than the other. And it's worth talking a little bit about the reason that a point of sale or a cash register was invented. It was invented by a gentleman who owned a small store. And he primarily wanted it for providing a receipt to his customers. So his customers had a proof that they bought something in his store. There, was, um, there were other stores in the neighborhood, and people would bring things back in, and he didn't know if they bought it from him or not. And So the reason for the cash, the original reason that the cash register was invented was specifically to give that piece of paper to the customer so that they would have a proof that they bought it from that store. Now, not long after the original cash register was invented, the very traditional ding that you hear in the old style ones and some even some of the newer ones with their cash drawers, they'll make that noise. Um, that was invented so that when the boss man was in the back, he could hear when the cash drawer was opened. So you kind of mentally keep track. So there's a history behind this of really, you know, necessity is the mother of invention, right? This guy needed a proof that people bought it from him and he needed a way to know when the drawer was being opened so he could watch. And that was the reason that the original cash register was invented. Now, today we don't call them cash registers anymore. We call them point of sales because they do a lot more than that. But they sit at the physical location in the store where your point of purchase is. Where are the point? Now, that as well is training changing. We're going to talk about mobile options in a couple slides. But, um, but traditionally, this is the model where you have a system. You have it in one place in the store. Your customers bring the, the, the purchases to that place, then it's bagged and maybe you gift wrap it or whatever, and you take their point of payment and you give them a receipt and they meet. And you won't need this um, in your business as long as for a while, but once you have a cash and carry business, at a minimum, you'll need like a square type system, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, but uh, maybe if you get this enough, you'll need a system like this. 
so we talked a little bit about the first bullet point, modern equivalent of the very first point of sale cash credit invented and perfected by National Cash Register. Uh, it sits on a table. It's not mobile. So this is a big difference over the last 10 years that more and more point of sale uh, is happening while people are moving around. A lot of people talk about the Apple store because you go in the Apple store, you buy an iPhone. You don't actually go anywhere in the store. You just pay the guy standing in front of you. They were not the ones that invented that, but they do it very well. Just like, um, what is it, that uh, uh, Ford wasn't the one that invented the, uh, the assembly line, but he perfected it, right? Apple definitely does a good job with their point of sale, but they did not invent the mobile point of sale. Um, and then uh, some people, you, you may have heard the term cash wrap, especially if you worked retail before, because... This is also when, when, when money was primarily cash, you needed a safe place behind the counter to kind of wrap it all up and then put it in the safe at the end of the night or take it to the bank in the morning. So they would call this, and a lot of people still call it cash wrap. Till is also used, but till is specifically the drawer where the money is, not the whole system. Uh, most modern ones that, that look like this one on the right do have some sort of touchscreen functionality, so you're not using the keyboard all the time. Yeah, Macy's, you know, they'll, they might have an eraser or something that they're using, but they're, they're using the screen. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the cost of these. So let's, let's fast forward, let's say 12 months. Online business is going great. You've got a local demand for your business, and you're, um, you know, you're, you're looking at a retail space, and you're going to open some, you're going to open new doors. You're going to need to have some sort of point of sale system. And probably you're going to want to go to one. You're want to, going to want to invest in one that's sitting on a counter somewhere um, at some point. When when you look at these um, solutions, it's very important to um, ask questions about warranty because uh, and what and, and what the replacement entails. Because what you when you have a system like this in your store it is going to be kind of the lifeblood of your whole business. You know, it, you're, Alondis, you're going to be smart and you're going to have a system in place where the power goes out or, or you know, the computer crashes, you'll be able to still do your business. Maybe you just go to pencil and paper. But if the power has ever gone out and you ever try to buy something, you ever notice how hard that is? Because everybody's like, oh, the point of sale doesn't work, you know? They all pretend like it's not possible to, like, take your money and, manually make change, which it's still possible to do that, right. you know? So you don't want to be those guys. But um, but that's going to happen. At some point, the hardware is going to fail. At some point, lightning's going to strike it. Somebody's going to spill a Coke on it. Something's going to happen. So when you buy a um, point-of-sale system, you want to know how quickly is it going to be, or is a replacement going to be shipped to me? And then you want to know what's on the replacement. So when they ship me a replacement, do I have to have the technician come in and reinstall all the software all over again, which could take a day or more? Or does it come in with all my information on it ready to go, just like it never happened? And uh, and the uh, the other thing to think about too is when you when you need a replacement for your hardware, a lot of places will offer the ability to go ahead and send you one immediately. And then you ship the old one at your leisure, like within 30 days or something like yeah. that. The better companies will do this. Uh, you, you, you've probably experienced this with Amazon's in some cases. You know, you go online, you say, I didn't fit me, you know, or it's broken. Well, they'll go ahead and immediately give you a refund. Then when it comes in the mail, they check to make sure they got it. And then it's all good. But if 30 days pass and they didn't get it, they might send you a warning. And eventually they'll charge you again for it. So this is the this is the same sort of thing you want to look at with hardware. You want to understand if if and when this happens, what's being shipped to me? How quickly do I have to ship back what I've got? Because you don't want to your business is on the line here. You don't want to have to be boxing up something and rushing to FedEx when you know you really just want to pull out a pencil, and paper, and a cigar box and just do it the old fashioned way for a little while. Um, so that's a, I put a lot in that very first bullet point, but. And I've been talking for a minute. Do you have any questions so far? No, no, everything makes. Okay. Um, so I talked about the second bullet point already. Now, uh, the third point I kind of alluded to a minute ago, more and more stuff is in this nebulous thing we call the cloud, right? 
which basically means your data is backed up on a server in some computer somewhere over the internet. That's all that means. So the more um, that the system you purchase, the more that that's, that's in place, the easier it's going to be to replace hardware. Think of like, uh, you said you use, um, use Android, right? Or, I have um, an iPhone. You have an iPhone, that's right. So let's say your iPhone gets dropped in the water. Well, last night it automatically backed up over the internet. You go to the Apple store, you get one, and you, you know, tap a couple of passwords in there. And then you wait a couple hours because it takes a while to download all that stuff. And then all of a sudden your phone looks like it just did at midnight last night. That is amazing. Now, you're not going to find, you're really probably not going to find anything like that in the point of sale world, unfortunately. But you want to get to as close to that as possible. Okay. You don't want them to have to be like, well, all your data is gone. Sorry. Or, you know, we got to charge you for a day and a half a technician to come out and just put CDs and thing and install the software again. Okay. So you want to think about what's in the cloud and what's local um, when you're looking at your hardware decision. And the good thing about these point of sale systems, though, is that they tend to also be software agnostic. So that means that let's say that you buy a um, solution from NCR um, and you buy the NCR software. And uh, and let's say, uh, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm bidding on NCR, but I'm going to just, so this is just an example. Let's say you don't like the software, you don't like the service, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You want to go with some system from IBM. Uh, then you call up IBM and you say, look, I want your system, I don't want the NCR system, but this is the hardware I have. Generally speaking, they will be able to just use your hardware. Now, they won't extend the whole the warranty, okay. but if you're a boutique or a cash and carry kind of kind of a store, then um, then they will be able to say, uninstall the other software, because it's generally they run Windows. Okay. So you may be able to uninstall and install. This is a contrived example, right? I mean, IBM is probably... Um, only going to be selling point of sale systems to grocery stores and huge operations, not boutiques, but you get the idea. Right. Uh, and then the other thing about having a system like this is you don't want to abuse it, but you can also run Office. You can run um, you know, your books. You can keep track of. You can log on to your WordPress website, do your maintenance. All, so you don't necessarily have to have multiple computers. Okay. You can rely on, You can as long as it's running Windows, you can do you don't want your employees coming in and going right. on Facebook right, and downloading right. stuff, but you could use it for other things in your business. So this is the traditional point of sale. I think I've got one more slide. Nope, that's it. And this is the kind of this is generally a big investment, and you know you may be able to pay for it over time. There's finance plans available, that sort of thing. But when you look at this, you're really going to want to think about what are the goals for my business and how is this going to enable those goals, right? This should be an enabler and it should help you track all that stuff. Uh, so I hope that you're going to be needing to buy one of these soon because that means your business is going right. well, right? Um, but in the meantime, you probably will be good with an online or mobile option. Um, so let's still stick with the physical world before we go there, though. Let's talk about peripherals. Uh, so peripherals uh, Start with printers. I'm going to read the second bullet point first. Do not underestimate the time it will take to get take you to get your printers working the way you want. Transactions are still largely conducted by print putting ink to paper. And I mean, how many times you still get a receipt when you walk in somewhere? And I don't know why, but receipt printers are some of the most difficult things to get to work. And so when you're looking at these hardware options and you're making a, or you're watching this video online and you're thinking, I want to buy a point of sale system, but I don't like the fact that they're going to charge me $600 for the receipt printer. I'm going to go on eBay, and I'm going to see if I can find something that says it'll work for $200. I'm thrifty. I'm with you on the eBay thing. I totally get that. But this is the wrong place to try to save that money because a receipt printer and any type of peripheral in general, but definitely any printer, is going to need to be specifically set up to work with your point of sale system. This is also going to be the case with your mobile system, too. You might have a Bluetooth printer or something that connects over the wireless network to your iPhone or your iPad. You're going to want to buy the printer that's guaranteed to work with your software. And you're going to pay a little premium for that, but it's going to pay off in the hassle. I'd estimate, I mean, I, I spent 15 years working in retail technology, and I probably have spent six months of my life working on just printers. I mean, 
it's crazy how you think how it's just some right. printer, right? And then you start to think about the other ways your business is going to use a printer. Back to this first bullet point, your receipt is the most obvious one. This is what you're going to give the customer with their merchandise. Um, and even though more and more systems support emailing receipts, mm -hmm. a paper receipt is still still popular. Um, and depending on your business, your you in your business you can probably get away with email receipts almost 100 percent of the time, as long as your customers are willing to give you an email address. Right. Um, but a business like AutoZone, for example, where you've got a um, a battery that's going to sit in their car, and then if something goes wrong with it, they want to bring it back and get a refund, prorated refund, they have to give a piece of paper. Right? You ever notice how long those things right. are, too? It's crazy. But um, so the other ways you're going to use, and this, this, is, this may drive you to use a physical point of sale system before anything else does in your business, you're going to want to do labels. And that's going to be a different printer than your receipt printer. Oh. And it's going to be a different printer than your invoice or report printer. This is going to be a dedicated, it looks kind of like the picture I have here. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a dedicated device that really, that prints directly on the labels. And for you, you're going to want like probably hang tags right. or something like that. That's got the, you know, the skew on it, the style, um, and then, uh, and then the, uh, uh, you know, the price obviously for your customers. Mm -hmm. You may, um, you may also want other things like, Depending on, on what type of stuff you're selling in your store, you could have a special code on there that tells your salesperson cost, or you could have, um, or you could have things like who the vendor is. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I, probably the dresses and items you're selling have tags, but maybe they don't. Maybe maybe you want to actually put that this is from some designer mm -hmm. in LA or New York on the label. So um, so a label printer is going to be. Now you don't need a point of sale system for labels. But if you've already got all that data right. in your point of sale system, it makes printing labels yeah. a lot easier. There, yeah. um, uh, now let me talk about the coding for a minute. So in a jewelry store, this is very common. What they'll often do on the label is not only will they put the customer's price, but they'll also put a code on there which actually tells the salesperson what the cost is. Um, now as a customer, you can't read that right. code. You don't know what it means. There'll be some dots They might mean there might be some dashes or some letters and numbers. But when the salesperson is talking to you, they'll look at that and they'll know how much money is in the price and how much they can, well, how much wiggle room they have before they you know, let you out of the door. It's very common with with, uh, with jewelry to do that sort of thing. There might be something like that for your for your business, but mostly it's probably just the price and the skew. Um, and then your inv invoice or report printer is probably the easiest one. This is your standard laser printer generally. It's probably going to work with almost any point of sale system, but you want to think about speed and cost if you're going to be printing a lot of things off. Maybe your accountant needs reports periodically. Maybe you have to send them off to the tax man. Maybe, um, you know, whatever the reason is. Um, think about at home how often you print things out on your, you know, your inkjet. Probably me, I print something like once a week maybe. Maybe, right? Um, but in your business, you might be printing once a day, and that can get expensive. If the ink's expensive and requires special paper or whatever. So generally, just get a cheap laser printer. Okay. Uh, okay, so pin pads. Probably after printers, pin pads are some of the most. This is not a picture of a pin pad, it's a picture of a barcode scanner, obviously. But um, pin pads are probably the second most complicated to get working. Um, after printers, so again, you're going to want to go with what your the the, so, the so system is recommending. But um, but the thing about pin pads is usually if they're not working, you can just go without them if you have to. For example, uh, if they can't enter their pin, you can you generally swipe their debit card or the credit card. The downside to that is that while it doesn't cost the customer any more money, it costs you more money. Um, so, because um, debit cards are cheaper for your bank than credit cards, so you want that pin pad to work. You want that, but um, but these are generally not going to shut your business down if they're not working. Uh, Verifone and Ingenico, who incidentally both have offices in Atlanta, uh, uh, just, and so does NCR, by the way. Yeah, um, they uh, 
they are the most popular models and uh, are the most popular manufacturers. Uh, there's really, there's this, the picture of, uh, that I have here on this slide is the scanner. This is the king of all of the barcode scanners. It's a symbol, I think it's like an LS208 or something like that. There's different variations on it, but it's the scanner you're gonna end up buying. It's, and every system works with it. Um, and that's what you're gonna use for not only, not only um, are you gonna scan the barcodes as you're selling things, but even while you're doing your online business, you may be interested in something like this to scan inventory into your system. So, um, you know, WooCommerce probably doesn't have a support out of the box. They may, they may not, I don't know, for a scanner like this, but the thing about the scanner is you can put it in what's called a keyboard emulation mode. So what that does is, let's say that you're wanting to scan all the SKUs and you just ordered from, from your vendor. Well, you can line them all up here. You can plug this scanner into your laptop, open up Word or your WooCommerce or whatever, and you can scan barcode, key in the description, scan barcode, key in the description, and this will key the barcode right into the computer for you because it basically pretends it's a keyboard and types stuff in. So it can save you time to have one of those even before you have um, a full point of scale system. <clears throat> All right, we'll talk about cash drawers, also known as the till, for a minute, and we'll pause again for some questions. Um, APG is one of the big cash drawer manufacturers. Um, they, these things are ancient technology. They're heavy because they're designed not to be broken into. And But if you've got a business that takes cash, you have to have one. They're so antiquated that the way that these things communicate with your computer is usually through the receipt printer, which is another way, another reason to get the right receipt printer. Right. Okay. Because um, what they'll do is your receipt printer will plug into your computer or your point of sale, and then the cash drawer will actually plug into the receipt printer. And the cash, when your transaction's complete, the receipt printer actually sends a command to the cash drawer to open for you. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it just seems bizarre by today's standards, but all, I mean, every if you bought something with cash mm -hmm. and you had the drawer pop open, it probably did it this way. It's just they, they just they're just not changing it. You know, it's just the way it goes. Um, all right. So, any questions before we uh, go on to mobile device, devices? So the scanner at Motorola is pretty much a standard one. Yes, it's um, it's Motorola bought a company called Symbol, spelled okay. S Y M B O L, okay. and so you may see it under that name. It's the same thing. Okay. And uh, and then if you get one that does keyboard emulation, okay. then that's that'll work with any computer. I've had it hooked up to this MacBook and just mm -hmm. scan barcodes in. So, um, okay. uh, yeah, good question. Let's see if we've got any other attendees. Online. Okay. I don't think there's going to be any questions online. All right. Any other questions about the point of sale hardware, the pin pads, printers, scanners? No. Okay. Yeah, before, again, before you even get to a full point of sale system, you may be printing labels and scanning barcodes. Right. And then, you know, you've got a uh, and you could just Google. There's a company called Zebra that makes very popular label printers. I don't want to check them out yet. Um, labels are usually black and white, so I think that's why they call themselves Zebra. But, uh, all right, so mobile devices. This is where point of sale is definitely going, and it's not already there. Um, we, might, we talked about the Apple Store a little bit. More and more places are doing this. Um, NCR has an offering that lets you walk around the store, and uh, a lot of times they call it line busting. So you got a long line, somebody walk around, check people out with just a few things, mm -hmm. get the That's line down. Because if you have a long line in your store, people are just going to leave. Mm -hmm. you know? It's kind of a rule of, of retail that your customer can spend, they'll spend two hours looking at all the stuff and spending time and enjoying and relaxing and taking pictures, sending their friends, trying things on. 
as soon as they get in line, yeah, they want to be out of there. If, you, if there's a delay, they'll put that thing that they spent two hours deciding on right down and they'll leave. So, uh, so that's why this is getting so popular, one of the reasons anyway. So the iPhone, everybody knows the iPhone. You've got one, I've got one. Uh, it's very mobile. It's relatively inexpensive if you compare it to a full traditional point of sale system. Um, slates are available with Mac stripe readers, Bluetooth printer access, etc. So you can get all the stuff that you normally do on a point of sale on one of these small devices. They'll even have barcode scanners in them. Um, that uh, that could, that that will probably double the device if you get all the, double the cost if you get all that stuff. But you'll have a what it'll be a little. I know the people watching this online can't see me, but it'll be a, a slate that'll slide onto the phone. And you might have a mag stripe reader here to swipe the card. I think they have that at the Apple mm-hmm. Store. And then the back of it may even have a, a barcode scanner, or um, they can use the camera, but the camera's slow. So oh, yeah, you line up. Have you ever done that? You line up yeah. the camera. It's like, uh, okay, got it. But you, you know, when you've got that customer in front of you, you don't want to be like, yeah, you know. But in a pinch, you could do it. Um, and then also uh, a Bluetooth printer. So these these devices all okay. have Bluetooth now. Um, and in the stadiums, they'll even have, you've seen this, you buy a beer or whatever, and they'll have the printer sitting on their belt. Mm-hmm. So they bring you up right there, and then it comes out. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, iPad, uh, this is going to be better only when you really need that extra screen real estate. So if you're managing orders where you need to look at more data, mm-hmm. um, you know, you uh, Alondis, you could look at, um, you know, you could take your business in any any number of directions, but let's say that you started um, having, uh, uh, you started having fashion shows rent from you, right? So they come in, they pick out the dresses, they rent. You're going to want to track that in your right. system. Although you're not going to want to pull all that in your, your iPhone, right? You're going to want at least an iPad if not sitting right. down on the computer. So that's where an iPad, you can still walk around your store, you can still kind of you know, be mobile, but you got a bigger screen to track well, everything that's going to right. the to the um, fashion show. Um, reports are easier to read, obviously, uh, and then if you're doing anything like managing your employees or anything like that, it can be better. Uh, Android, I don't want to leave them out. Um, phones and tablets, of course, uh, there's tons of options, uh, but usually the first and best supported options are on the iPhone and iPad. And there's a number of reasons for that. Um, iPhone has a huge advantage over the competition because they have a very homogeneous environment. Mm-hmm. So if you develop a, a piece of software like a point of sale solution for the iPhone, then it'll work on a million devices tomorrow. But there's so many different Android devices, it's hard to know how many customers you can reach. If, you, if your product isn't any good, then you know, who knows? It doesn't matter. But if you have a really good product, you might be limiting yourself in the Android market. So generally speaking, people at least start when they release software in the, in the, in the iPhone world. And then the other thing about the iPhone is that there's, there's a lot more than there used to be. There used to be one size, right? Everything was the same size. Now you've got the iPhone, you got the iPhone 4, you got the iPhone 5, you got the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. So you got four different sizes. But they're still supported. Older than the iPhone 4, actually, oh, iPhone 4S, which is the same size as iPhone 4. Older than that, it's not supported anymore. So you get four four sizes. If I'm a manufacturer and I'm going to make a scanner that's going to slide onto a phone, am I going to make it for four sizes or 50 sizes, which are all Androids, right? So when you're looking at a business solution like like a point of sale, that's why generally the iPhone and the iPad tend to be. Of course, it perpetuates itself, right? You know, but uh, but that's the, that's 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 the world we live in. That's that's where things are at right now. Um, and here's what you're going to want to really think about when you talk about mobile devices. I have this highlighted here. What happens if you're not online? So the internet goes out. You know, for whatever reason, some you know some kid yanks the plug out of the thing, even if it's only for a few minutes, or the router breaks, gets rained on, or or at t just goes on the fritz, whatever it is. Um, or you, maybe you're using a, like, a, like here, I'm using this, um, this uh, wireless, or this, uh, I'm going over the network, the Sprint network to connect to the internet. Let's say for some reason this thing 
you know, fails. Well, you're going to want to be able to still make those sales. And if you've got a mobile device like one, like an iPhone or an iPad, you're going to need some sort of offline functionality. You're going to want that. Generally, that's hard to find. Um, so that's uh, that's something to consider uh, if you've got a lot of transactions. Uh, you know, internet is pretty robust. I mean, I don't remember the last time it went out of my apartment even, but it's going to happen, and it'll happen. At the the, one, the day when you have the big tent sale and the trunk show and all that, that's when the internet will go out, and you don't want that. So something to consider. All right, I think we're getting towards the end of the presentation part of this, but um, mobile providers. So let's talk about those. Well, any questions about the mobile devices before I move on to this? Um. You, you've got a iPhone already, right. so you've already got that. Yeah. And then you can just cause PayPal and... We're going to talk about those. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Okay. I'll wait. <laughs> okay, no problem. Yeah, no problem. So Square is the most popular for actually uh, being able to take payments and ring up sales on your iPhone. They've done a company that didn't exist five years ago. They've done amazingly well. And the where that they where they've excelled... The reason they're so popular is that they've simplified the whole process of setting up point of sale. So when you sign up with Square, you don't know this, but in the back end, you're also signing up with a credit card provider. Square is getting all that money in the middle, right? Normally, if you buy a point of sale system, you also have to sign up with a credit card provider. Sometimes you have to sign up with multiple ones if you accept American Express, right. Discover, all this stuff. So, uh, so what Square has done is basically said, you go online, you sign up with us, and we're going to offer, you know, we're going to take care of all that credit card stuff for you, and we'll give you this fun little device that, um, that plugs into your phone that you can swipe credit cards with. And, uh, and it's a, been a brilliant business model for them. The where, where you want to uh, watch out with Square, though, is a couple things. Um, if you price them out, if you price their credit card fees out, you will find that they're high. Um, and that's because you know it's an e it's it's all about e you know it's all about getting started quickly. Nothing mm -hmm. wrong with signing up with Square; just get something going. But be aware that they're charging you more than if you were to go shop around for credit cards. It's called um, merchant services. We talked about it last time. It's going to be cheaper going with somebody else. Now, also, but but the, the counterpoint to that is that generally Square is probably going to have a short contract or no contract when you sign up. When you sign up with a merchant services provider, there's usually a two or three year commitment. And the fees are expensive to cancel. It could be anywhere from $250 to $500 for the fees. So you're getting a better deal, but you're in for the long haul as opposed to Square where you're kind of signed, you're, you're set on their prices, but you can kind of jump in and out as you need to. The other thing about Square, is that their software is relatively simple. Um, by point of sale standards, by you know going back to that picture of the fancy uh, NCR system, they do very little. You know, they ring up the sale, they charge your basic taxes, that sort of thing. Um, but if you were to want to say uh, do those, we talked about renting to mm -hmm. a um, fashion show. Forget about it. Can't do it in Square. If you were to want to change your report, because well, the cost report here, it's okay, but I really like to break it down by color, okay. you know, because I want to know if red dresses sell more than green dresses or if they're more profitable. Forget it. You won't have that kind of flexibility with Square. Over the coming years, I'm sure they'll make some things better, but it's not really their, their goal is really not, you know, deep reporting, advanced mm -hmm. systems. Their goal is to get a little Square scanner into as many customers as possible and to make the software easy to use. And they've done that. So it's not bad if you got to get up and running. Um, PayPal has a competitive offering and it's a little less expensive than Square. But the software is simpler. And one big problem with the software, I've used the software, is at least a year ago, it's been a year since I've used it, so hopefully they fixed it now. But at least a year ago, there was no way to manually to, to keep the email addresses that you put in there. 
we actually opened actually opened a case with PayPal and asked them about this because they'll let you email the receipt to the to the, the customer, but you can't keep that. You can't go back and get that email address anymore. It's really? gone. So what we would do when we use the software is we'd go on the iPhone, we let them key in their email address or whatever. But before they went to the next screen, we'd highlight it and copy it into the memory on the phone. Then finish the transaction. When you get the phone back, you paste it in the notepad, so you have a list of email addresses. But it was it was such a pain yeah. to do that, and there was no way to get the email addresses. Yeah. yeah. So um, so keep 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 an eye on like gotchas like that. Okay. But but and PayPal will send you a free scanner too. If they if they say they're going to charge you for one, that's that's craziness. Just call them up on the phone and be like, I want a free one. They'll send you a free. One. Uh, you mentioned again uh, Wells Fargo. If it's a relationship you already have, uh, the only thing I would caution you there is your commitment. You know, because they'll they'll be happy to sign you up, but you're probably looking at a two or three year commitment, which might be fine. I'm not saying it's not fine, but just be aware of what the cancellation fees and that sort of thing are. And everything's negotiable. You can always tell them that you don't want to sign an agreement. They may be so happy to have your business that they say, okay, we'll waive that. Get it in writing. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, NCR has an offering. Nobody's ever heard of it. It's it does okay, I guess. I have a friend in the in the, that's over there and said that they're they're selling a few here and there, but uh, um, it's not nearly as possible. It's not nearly as popular as Square and PayPal, okay. but it's a similar offering where you swipe things on your phone um, and then. But it's a more robust offering. It's got more reporting. There's more. There's a web backend you can go and do stuff. So it's worth you know getting on Google and looking at CR Silver just to see another option out there. Um, and I'm going to mention real quick custom solutions. This would if you know if I was opening a store, my, if I was reopening my iPhone and iPod repair shop, this would not be for me. It's not going to be for you and your boutique. We're not talking about that kind of our arena system a minute ago where it's. Highly customized. It's specifically designed for like a concession stand or selling T-shirts or whatever. And then it's got a it's got a Bluetooth printer hanging on their belt, and it's talking back to some expensive server that's communicating on dedicated wow. access points. But these exist. So anyone who's watching the video online, the, there are very advanced systems for this type of thing. They cover large areas or remote salespeople and that sort of thing. So, uh, so, uh, so it's worth looking at. I say it's cost big bucks here. Uh, with all of these, you're going to want to be, um, you're going to want to understand how secure your data is. Now, generally, with all four of the options that are on here, it's, your data is going to be secure. PayPal, Square, NCL, NCR Silver. Um, as far as I know, none of these have suffered any sort of data breach. NCR. Um, I, th I think it was in. I, I forget. I actually don't know what system it was at, at um, Target that had that breach, but it wasn't a mobile system. It was the more traditional one that we, we showed here. It was a very advanced attack on them. But uh, but just make sure when you talk to Wells Fargo, you'll be surprised. I've gone through this before. How it will be hard to find out, even though you're talking to a bank, what security protocols are in place for your point of sale data. Yeah, you'll ask, and they'll say, oh, uh, well, let me get back to you on that, or let me talk to Joe. You know, like, you think they would have that right at the top. Right. Banks are horrible at that. You think they'd be the best, but they're horrible at that. I don't know why. So, now, we, we, I mentioned those briefly. What questions do you have? About the... um, yeah, I was debating between Square and PayPal, and, um, you know, I know a few people who have Square, and I know a few people. PayPal, and I was leaning more towards the PayPal until I looked into the Wells Fargo. Yeah. Um, of course, PayPal is is, is probably it's, it's cheaper than what they poured me at Wells Fargo, but we still kind of negotiated a little okay. bit. Okay, so PayPal was is cheaper than Square. I know that I didn't know it was cheaper than uh, than your merchant services. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, what do you know? What software solution they're offering at Wells Fargo? Is it they have their own app, or what is it? I, I don't know okay. I can probably email it later on. Yeah, maybe we'll pull it up after the meeting if you got it online or something. Okay, cool. 
to look at it. But uh, but that would probably be the that would be a big if if I was in your shoes, I would really be well. How much reporting can I do? Can I get the email addresses? All that sort of stuff. Yeah, but I didn't think about the email. Just yeah. You just said, I just oh, wait, but you don't. I mean, you think you're on your yeah, iPhone? They're going to keep email yeah. addresses, but I I. I mean, I hope I don't get a nasty email from PayPal, but I mean, it'd be great if they were watching this video. I'd be flattered, but um, but maybe they've got it fixed in their new their new software. Um, all right, well that's that's hardware. Um, we kind of flew through some of that stuff, but uh, I am doing a, a meetup in two weeks. We're going to do AdWords, so that may take a lot more time because we're going to go into the AdWords system, figure out how to do bidding and all that. And then I've got uh, my colleague Gopi Krishna, who's going to remote in from India in, uh, in a month. And he's going to give us some really good information on graphic design, um, kind of the, the right way to uh, lay out your website and think about your logo. Um, I noticed you had a logo done. Was that something you did yourself, or did you have a graphic designer do that? Yeah, I had. Okay. Good. Well, if anybody is watching this video online and you have any questions, you can reach me at this information here. And uh, I'm very happy to have had Alondis here asking such great questions.